Thanks for joining us again here at the Lazy Brook Farm. I'm Mark and this is Heather. And we're headed up north to show you how to make that liquid gold maple syrup. The weather's been good and the sap's been flowing. It's time to get boiling. Last time we were up here, we snowshoed around the property a little bit and collected some of this sap that accumulated. So this just happens when it's frozen. Just dump it right in. Using these freezer bags makes it a lot easier to collect this frozen sap. Heather's grandfather, Lee, attached these smaller buckets to this sled to help collect the sap in those harder to reach areas. It really helped make things a lot easier and a lot less trips to these larger buckets. All of the green pails and these larger gray buckets have never been used for anything else but sap and we sanitize right before we start collecting. It doesn't take long until you fill these guys up and you need to start boiling. Uh, Lee woke up at about 3.30 this morning and started everything going for us. So it's like five layers of doneness. Yeah, each pan is successively closer to done. Yeah, that's the done. The dunnest. The dunnest, done. less done. What is the purpose of having all the melted pans? Why it wouldn't be just one big finished pan, just because it'd be too much to pour? Well, if you had just one pan, <coughs> you'd have to dump cold sap in it. Mm -hmm. And I've learned by doing that, that it makes your sap really black color. Oh, okay. By doing that, you keep cutting, going from hot to cold, hot to cold. It makes it real dark for some reason. Okay. So in order to get that sort of grade A fancy sort yeah, of level of sweetness way. and lightness, yeah. Yeah. doing it so that you get it as close to done before you put yeah. it in the done pan. I do this here because this is kind of like a lime and it makes your syrup a whole lot sweeter and clearer without that in there. So I try to get that out as much as possible and then I take it out of this pan here <coughs> before I dump it in over there. Then I get to the back into the trunk. Bring this one over here. And we've put this through a strainer up there already so it's, it's all clear. And this one here is preheated. This over here. After everything's going and the sap's boiling, it's time to go out and collect some more sap. Today is a little bit of a warmer day, thankfully, and the sap's been flowing. sap is yellowish like that. Yeah. That means that the water from the tree has come down and came in on this pile. And that stuff that comes off the tree, I don't want it my sap, so I just dump it. Look at that bag. That's almost a gallon in, what, not even 12 hours? Since this sap's not frozen, we'll be straining it when we put it into the large buckets and when we take it out. Depending upon your weather, you might want to pack snow around your storage buckets. So you built this whole contraption yourself, right? Yeah. Scott helped with getting the metal cut out. Well, he's the one that suggested using this stove as a match by cutting the top right off 
and putting that frame on there to set the evaporators on so they, it's all open on me so the flames are right underneath the pan. Yeah, in order to get it hot enough. If it right. was on top of the stove, you wouldn't get it hot enough. That right. would be... Well, it would boil, but take a lot more time. After most of the day hanging around and visiting with family, we're back outside to collect a little bit more sap. A few of the trees are a little further away, so Lee uses his tractor and trailer to go out in there and collect them. I believe he said this was a 71 Sears tractor. Well, it's not going to be the last time it's rained, so... No. Think it's going to be full? Uh, I, I think, think it might be. It's going to be quite full. Yeah, that's for Deborah. Loading the wood stove here. I noticed your wood's very tiny. Why are you using small wood? It burns hotter. The biggest stuff is okay if you're going to load up with big stuff if you're going to work, work to have lunch. It'll last longer, mm -hmm. so you won't get the heat. Not as much. Nope, might need to turn that one down. Nope, we leave that ring on there because that makes it boil better, we found out. Mm. That doesn't know it was too good. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it gets a little carried away. You have to turn it down a little bit. The sap's really boiling now. It's starting to get that nice golden color. All of the smaller pans have now been emptied into that back pan and it's now time to add that pan to the front. It's really starting to boil now. It won't be long. Better keep your eye on it. It can turn to maple syrup fast. If it goes a little bit too long, you'll end up developing some large sugar crystals and that's not quite as much fun. What we're looking for here is large droplets of maple syrup that almost seem to shear off the front of the spoon. We call those flakes. You see those flakes? Yeah. That's, that's when you're really starting to get there. Blink and you just might miss it. They cover this stainless steel bucket in a little bit of filter cloth to filter the maple syrup before they bring it up. They got this bucket specifically for this purpose and this purpose only. You definitely want to use clothespins to hold that filter cloth in place. You don't want anything sliding around with hot maple syrup. Now it's time to let that rest for about 12 hours. The next day we can start the canning process. You want to transfer that syrup over to a clean pan, leaving behind any sediment that's settled out to the bottom. Then bring that syrup right back up to a boil. You do want to boil your cans and the lids, kill off any possible bacteria, and to also bring those up to temperature. Once everything is up to temperature, pull out one can and one lid, and then you can start filling with your delicious maple syrup. Be sure to fill all the way up to the shoulder of the jar, and not much more. You do want a little bit of air to help make the vacuum to seal the jar. Be sure to wipe up any excess drips to make sure the lid gets a great seal. to sneak off with a partial jar of that delicious first run maple syrup. You can really see the difference.
Wow, that tasted really great. I mean, you really just can't compare that first run maple syrup. Even one a few weeks later, it's, it's just, that first run's so light and sweet. It just tastes so good. It's a lot of work, but it's also a lot of fun, and syrup that good just can't be bought. So thanks for joining us on our family tradition. And if you enjoyed yourself, please click that subscribe button because it would really help us out a lot. Thanks.